Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Zombie with Sewing Machines. Today, we'll be working on a Singer 306W. This particular machine was uh, gifted to the Buy Nothing community by one of its members who wanted to have it um, restored to give away to someone who could use it. So this is in a folding cabinet. It's two parts. That part first. This part next. Lift this. And then pull the machine up and support it while you rest this down. All right. So this is the Singer 306W. Um, there are also 306Ks and 306Ms. The only difference is where they were manufactured. The Ws were manufactured in Connecticut. The Ks were manufactured in Scotland. And the Ms were manufactured in Italy. So this machine is a cast aluminum machine. Um, it was meant as a replacement for the Singer 206, which was a cast iron machine, much heavier, although it had a lot of the same uh, features, and um, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, it was a short production run. They only made these machines from 1954 to 1961. So as you can see, it came, it came in several colors, uh, black, this tan color, and then this one is one of the rare ones. It's in a crinkle finish, or what they call the Godzilla finish. You can see it's really kind of rough up here. It makes a funny sound when you rub it. All right, so this machine was a very expensive, top-of-the-line machine uh, when it first came out, um, but it has a few quirks. This is one of those machines that's either love it or leave it. <laughs> and I'm kind of in between. I think it has some interesting features, but I, I'm not sure this. I would want this to be my regular sewer. So... First things first, um, it's a straight stitch and a zigzag. Um, this machine can make decorative stitches using these flat cams here, and we'll go into that in just a minute. Um, it's got a back tack that's got full reverse, so that means that the stitches reverse in um, the same length as your forward stitches. This is your stitch length lever. This is your um, adjustment lever for needle um, placement. So there's left needle, center needle, or sorry, right needle, center needle, <laughs> left needle. Um, and then this adjusts your the width of your uh, zigzag when you're going at zigzag. So you loosen the screw, move your zigzag to how wide you want it, five being the widest, zero being a straight stitch, and you screw it in to secure it. I've accidentally forgotten to screw this in and then bumped it while I was sewing and all of a sudden I was sewing zigzag and I didn't mean to. So that's important to remember. One of the unusual things about this machine is that it does not use your standard needle size. Um, this uses a 206 by 13 needle. These are available on um, online. Schmetz is the company who makes them in Germany. Um, but if you use, if you try to use a universal needle on this machine, it will break and you may break the machine. The other thing to remember when you're sewing, you always have to have a cam in the cam holder, whether it's whatever, a decorative cam or the, zig, the standard zigzag cam. I just leave the zigzag cam in at all times. All right, so talking about the needles again, sorry. Um, it does take an unusual size needle. And uh, like I said, it's a 206 by 13. It also uses an industrial size bobbin. So these are two reasons that people do not like this machine. One is the weird needle and one is the weird bobbin. As you can see, this is a full rotary hook machine but you can only access the bobbin by tilting the machine up, which is, let's be frank, kind of a pain in the butt. Um, but it is huge bobbin, which means you do get to put a lot of thread on it, um, so you can go a long time while you're sewing with this big bobbin. Okay. But everything else is pretty standard. You can also disengage the feed dogs. One of the unusual things about this machine is that it does not use your standard needle size. Um, this uses a 206 by 13 needle. These are available on um, online. Schmetz is the company who makes them in Germany. Um, but if you use, if you try to use a universal needle on this machine, it will break and you may break the machine. The other thing to remember when you're sewing, you always have to have a cam in the cam holder, whether it's whatever, a decorative cam or the, zig, the standard zigzag cam. I just leave the zigzag cam in at all times. All right, so talking about the needles again, sorry. Um, it does take an unusual size needle, and uh, like I said, it's a 206 by 13. It also uses an industrial size bobbin. So these are two reasons that people do not like this machine. One is the weird needle, 
and one is the weird bobbin. As you can see, this is a full rotary hook machine, but you can only access the bobbin by tilting the machine up, which is, let's be frank, kind of a pain in the butt. Um, but it is huge bobbin, which means you do get to put a lot of thread on it, um, so you can go a long time while you're sewing with this big bobbin. Okay. But everything else is pretty standard. You can also disengage the feed dogs um, by unscrewing here. Um, one of the unusual things about this machine is that it does not use your standard needle size. Um, this uses a 206 by 13 needle. These are available on um, online. Schmetz is the company who makes them in Germany. Um, but if you use, if you try to use a universal needle on this machine, it will break and you may break the machine. The other thing to remember when you're sewing, you always have to have a cam in the cam holder, whether it's whatever, a decorative cam or the, zig, the standard zigzag cam. I just leave the zigzag cam in at all times. All right, so talking about the needles again, sorry. Um, it does take an unusual size needle. And uh, like I said, it's a 206 by 13. It also uses an industrial size bobbin. So these are two reasons that people do not like this machine. One is the weird needle and one is the weird bobbin. As you can see, this is a full rotary hook machine, but you can only access the bobbin by tilting the machine up, which is, let's be frank, kind of a pain in the butt. Um, but it is huge bobbin, which means you do get to put a lot of thread on it. Um, so you can go a long time while you're sewing with this big bobbin. But everything else is pretty standard. You can also disengage the feed dogs um, by unscrewing here. Um, all right, so next up, we will go ahead and wind our bobbin. Okay, so now we're gonna thread the bobbin. It's a pretty standard procedure. Um, it has a self-regulating bobbin winder. So when the bobbin is full of thread, the bobbin winder will snap out um, of engagement and you will um, be able to stop winding your bobbin. Pretty simple, it's got a little slit in it. Um, like I said, these are very specific bobbins um, to the 306 and the 206 models. Um, there's also a sister model. I think it's called the 319. Maybe it's the 316. I have to look that up. But anyway, um, so this goes on. You'll see there's a little button there. You want to slide that over the button until it clicks into place. Take your thread from the back through the first thread guide down here to the tension disc and then up and over your bobbin. Oh, that just came undone. Push it back in. Okay. Then we want to engage. Push that down and loosen the clutch wheel right here on the side so that the wheel spins without engaging the needle. You'll see how this starts to wind. So now we've got all set up, we're ready to wind our bobbin. Uh, this machine, because it's mounted in a cabinet, has a knee lever, um, which actually just pushes on a foot pedal, which is mounted underneath here. So you can use it as a foot pedal or as a knee pedal, um, or a knee lever, depending on what your preference is. So here we go, we're starting to wind. Very exciting. Another thing people don't like about this machine is that it came with a pretty underpowered motor. Um, if I was going to make this my regular sewer, I think I would put a stronger motor on it. But for your everyday domestic sewing, it's great. It's fine. All right. Okay, so the next step is to put the bobbin into the bobbin case. As you can see, you want that thread going up around this way. And put it in the bobbin like bobbin case like this. See that little slit right there? You're going to pull the thread into there, around this little doohickey here, and pop it into that little slot, and you'll feel a little resistance, and that's when you know that it's in there, because that tension spring is giving it some resistance. Okay, next we're going to put the bobbin into the machine. So again, we have to do this by tilting the whole thing up, and you'll see here on the side, there's a little indentation right there. And you want to line up that indentation with the tip of this little arrow here. Okay. You just put it in like that. And then and when you hear that click, you know you've done it right. All right. Our next step in getting ready to sew is to thread the upper portion of the machine. And we start by going 
oh, first unwinding the thread from the back of the spool. I'm going to put it through the first thread guide there. That's just a little loop in between two of the tension discs. Hold that there, go around the spring, pull that spring, then you can release. You'll see that spring moving underneath the arm through this hole. Now remember, you always do this with the presser foot up so there's no tension on the string when you're threading. Through this guide, through this guide, okay, then through this guide last of all, and then you'll thread your needle from front to back. Now we want to bring up our bobbin thread um, to the top. We do that by holding the top thread gently towards you in your hand and turning the wheel. Oh, I'm gonna move that clutch wheel, engage that again. I forgot to do that after I wound the bobbin. Okay, so you'll see the needle goes up. And you get a little loop. And that's your bobbin thread. Make sure it's, pull it out. And tuck that behind. Now you're ready to sew. All right, so now we are ready to sew. We're gonna do a straight stitch first. Very simple, I just have a little piece of quilting cotton here. Lower your presser foot and push the lever and we should be good to go. You'll notice this noise, this machine is a little bit noisy. Um, the bobbin case is kind of clanky. So there's nothing wrong with the machine. It's just, that's how they are. You'll see a lot of people complain about that particular aspect of these machines. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is um, let's try a decorative stitch. So this machine, uh, came with a whole set of fashion discs, which is very exciting for those of us who like sewing notions. Um, so I'm going to show you how to put a different decorative stitch cam onto this machine. The one that's on there now is the standard zigzag. So you just lift this button, unscrew this nut right here. Don't drop it, which I usually do. Put that down, take this off. You want to make sure that your cam is facing out with the pattern. Now, some of these cams, if they are directional, you can flip the cam over and the pattern will go in the opposite direction. Totally cool. This is all analog, of course, people. All right, let's see, what are we gonna try here? Let's try this one that looks like an EKG. I don't know what they call that, but anyway. So, lift the lever, lever put this on, make sure you got your slit lined up with your little button there. Let your lever go. All right, so here you probably want to keep it center needle position, but we're going to widen the stitch. So I unscrew this here, move it to the desired width, let's say there, just maybe about four. Okay, this is also your stitch length lever. I should have um, mentioned that earlier. You can engage that or disengage it by unscrewing this clamp, move it whichever way you want. Let's do like a medium stitch so you can kind of see what's going on. When you get it to where you want it to go, screw that back in there. Put the nut back up here. Oh, I told you I would drop it. And it just needs to be finger tight, not super tight. All right, so now we're ready to sew some patterns. And here you're gonna see why this machine is called a swing needle machine. This lever right here is actually going to swing that whole needle mechanism back and forth. So watch when I sew how it, how it moves. Kind of cool. So there's our EKG pattern. Super fun. This is a sampler my daughter made of all of the different stitches that are available to use on this um, particular machine that this machine came with. And there's a couple more things. Uh, this machine has double um, spool pins. So if you wanted to do any twin needle sewing, you can do that. You put a spool on each pin. It has double tension discs, so you can put one thread through one set and one thread through the other, and then you use a twin needle uh, down here. Um, you always wanna make sure that your flat uh, side of the needle is facing to the back. Um, but actually this one won't let you put it in any other way. So, but just make sure you get that needle all the way up. Cause again, if that needle goes down too far, it will break. 
and because of the nature of this machine, if the needle tip breaks off, it's going to get caught down here in the bobbin case and it's going to make a big snarl and it's going to be unpleasant and unfun to deal with. So just keep that in mind. All right. So I hope you have enjoyed this video about the 306W. Um, if you have any questions or comments or anything, please feel free to leave them underneath here. Um, just as a sign out, uh, we always like to name these machines uh, based on what names were most popular the year they were manufactured. I'm not exactly sure what year this was, but I know it was the early side of the, of the um, 306 range because it has the cam thing. Um, so I'm gonna say this was born in 1954. And we found one of the most popular names in 1954 was Deborah. So this is Deborah, the 306W.